Hey everyone, today on People Now, LeBron James supporting NASCAR driver Bubba Wallace after a noose was found in his garage. We'll tell you what we've learned. Real Housewives of Orange County star Kelly Dodd defends herself after racist remarks. Justin Bieber tweets a thread of receipts and itineraries to refute sexual assault allegations. We'll explain. The hit Broadway musical Hamilton is headed to Disney Plus. We have details for when you can check it out. Also today, there's a reason he's a huge star. This guy's good. Actor Paul Reiser talks about his new role on The Kaminsky Method and what surprised him the most about the show's star, Michael Douglas. All that and more today on People Now. Let's go. Hey everyone, welcome to People Now. Hope you're having a good Monday so far. I'm Andrew Belke here in Wisconsin. What's up, Jeremy? I missed you last week. How was your time off? It was really nice. It was relaxing. I feel kind of caught up. And look, 13 weeks, no cut. I'm getting crazier than ever here. I don't know. It's like new, a new me. Are you going to cut it? What's the plan? I, well, New York's opening phase two this week, and I believe that includes barbershop. So it should, it's, it's coming to an end very soon. Okay. There There's a lot to get to today, though. Uh, here's what you need to know and what's trending for your Monday. LeBron James is showing his support for NASCAR driver Bubba Wallace after Wallace found a noose in his garage. On Sunday night, LeBron tweeted that Wallace is not alone, and he went on to explain how proud he is of him for, quote, continuing to take a stand for change here in America and sports. On Sunday, NASCAR released a statement after a noose was found in Wallace's garage at the Talladega Sportsway in Lincoln, Alabama. NASCAR expressed disgust and anger in that statement, adding that an immediate investigation had been launched and vowing that the racing organization will, quote, do everything we can to identify the persons responsible and eliminate them from the sport. We should note that Bubba Wallace is currently the only black driver in NASCAR. Wallace issued his own lengthy statement in response, sharing it on social media where he wrote in part, we will not be deterred by the reprehensible actions of those who seek to spread hate. As my mother told me today, they're just trying to scare you. Wallace went on to say, this will not break me. I will not give in, nor will I back down. I'll continue to proudly stand for what I believe in. Earlier this month, Wallace raised awareness for Black Lives Matter during the NASCAR Cup Series race at Martinsville Speedway in Virginia. He was the first full-time black driver to race in the Cup Series in nearly 50 years. For that race, Wallace's car was painted all black and featured the Black Lives Matter hashtag along its rear quarter panels. The words compassion, love, understanding appeared on the hood along with the painting of a black hand clasping a white hand. Wallace also spoke out and pushed for the Confederate flag to be banned at NASCAR events, a ban which the organization promptly put into effect earlier in June. The Real Housewives of Orange County star Kelly Dodd is defending herself on Instagram after a video resurfaced from 2016 on TMZ, which showed Dodd making racist remarks. In that TMZ video, Dodd says, quote, I don't like black guys. I don't even know any black guys. She later told the outlet that same year, quote, I am truly embarrassed. There is no excuse for bad behavior or comments that offend anyone. She added, that video does not represent who I really am, and I apologize for acting irresponsibly. Now, more than four years later, after that video first surfaced, it has again become a topic of conversation with Dodd taking to Instagram on Saturday to defend herself to her followers. One person commented saying, quote, but like, do you truly believe that? Because you're Mexican, you can't be racist? Dodd quickly responded saying, I've experienced racism personally. I'm a woman of color and love everyone. Dodd is the latest Bravo celebrity being called out after four cast members from Vanderpump Rules were let go earlier this month for their racially charged behavior, including longtime stars Stassi Schroeder and Kristen Doty. And Dodd's former Orange County co-star Tamara Judge gave her opinion on the matter during an Instagram Live. After being asked if Dodd should be fired, Judge said, quote, yes, I do. That TMZ video is disgusting. Bravo shouldn't just single certain people out like Stassi and Kristen. There should be zero tolerance at this point. In response to those remarks, Dodd replied with her take, saying, quote, she's just thirsty and mad she got the bullet, grasping for straws, poor thing. I hope she finds happiness. Justin Bieber is refuting an assault allegation against him. On Saturday night, a Twitter user under the name Danielle, who chose to keep her last name anonymous, alleged that she was sexually assaulted by the singer in 2014 when she was 21 and Bieber was 20. In response, Bieber began a series of tweets on Sunday evening, stating in part, quote, I don't normally address things as I have dealt with random accusations my entire career. But after talking with my wife and team, I've decided to speak up on an issue tonight. Bieber then produced screenshots of emails and hotel receipts to refute Danielle's claim. In his series of written tweets, he continued, quote, rumors are rumors, but sexual abuse is something I don't take lightly. I wanted to speak out right away, but out of respect to so many victims who deal with these issues daily, I wanted to make sure I gathered the facts before I made any statement. 
Danielle alleged that she met Bieber while attending an event in Texas and claimed that she and her friends were invited back to the pop star's hotel where she was, quote, sexually assaulted without consent. Danielle did not identify the friends and has not otherwise spoken publicly about the claim. The tweet, including the accusation and her entire account, were later removed from Twitter, and Danielle was not able to be reached by people for additional comments. Bieber concluded his tweets, writing in part, every claim of sexual abuse should be taken very seriously, and this is why my response was needed. Bieber's rep did not immediately respond to people's requests for comment. If you or someone that you know has been sexually assaulted, please contact the National Sexual Assault Hotline at the number or website below. All right, good news for Hamilton fans. Disney Plus has released a first look trailer for the filmed version of the beloved Broadway musical. Take a quick look. If you haven't seen Hamilton before, or even if you have, you'll soon be able to stream it from your home July 3rd on Disney+. Plus. The musical, written by Lin-Manuel Miranda, was such a smash hit with audiences and garnered major critical acclaim for its fusion of hip-hop and pop show tunes and its racially diverse cast. During an appearance on Good Morning America Monday, Miranda shared his excitement about the anticipated release. Watch. No one can predict uh, the, the way a work is received and, and the way Hamilton has been received has surpassed everyone's wildest dreams, but our biggest issue has always been accessibility. The live recording of the play, which was originally set to hit theaters in October of 2021, was captured over several days of onstage performances. It's been edited together for one up-close and cinematic version. But while millions will discover or rediscover their love for Hamilton's catchy songs, Miranda says his wife and his two kids, five-year-old Sebastian and two-year-old Francisco, are partial to his previous musical, In the Heights. Miranda joked with GMA host Michael Strahan saying that they're an In the Heights family and that his song Tell Me Something I Don't Know from that play is the jam around their house. If you haven't seen In the Heights, it'll soon hit the big screen for a movie adaptation starring Hamilton alum Anthony Ramos. And although that movie isn't set to release until 2021, Miranda is happy he can release something for fans this year. In the interview, he said, quote, I couldn't leave you one summer without at least one musical, so I was very grateful that we were able to move up Hamilton so that everyone can see it next week. All right, stay with us, guys. If you haven't caught season two of The Kaminsky Method yet, then you're missing out on Paul Reiser's new character. We're going to hear from him about what surprised him most on set. Plus, the creator of New York Fashion Week, Fern Malice, weighs in on the future of fashion amid the pandemic and the Black Lives Matter movement. That is all coming up. Stick around. Don't I get some kind of protection? No, Dr. Arkoff. Down there, it's all weapons-grade plutonium, reasonably safe. Up here, we've got hydrogen bombs that your lab built leaking tritium, which I've spent the last six months trying to clean up. So if you need any protection at all, it's from me. Your friends are waiting for you. Who can forget Denise Richards as the Bond girl in The World Is Not Enough? Now she's the latest celebrity to stop by People TV's couch surfing to take a look back and reflect on many of her projects throughout the years. She shared with couch surfing host Lola Oganike the sweet thing that her father did when she had to go to London to screen test for the role of Dr. Christmas Jones. Take a look. I um, auditioned okay. and then I went to London to screen test for it. And I actually, I think I screen test on um, Thanksgiving. My dad came with me because uh, I was just so sad to miss Thanksgiving with my family <laughs> when oh my I was God. cast and it was on the news and stuff. I was like, why is this such a big deal? And a friend of mine goes, do you realize you're in James Bond? I'm like, yeah, it's, I'm so excited. It's a great movie. He's like, no. <laughs> so like an iconic movie. Right. Uh, and <laughs> the to, eyes. To be a, like, Denise, to be a Bond girl is one of the most coveted roles in Hollywood. I mean. I found that out later when I. <laughs> Richards also made a memorable guest appearance on Friends and shared how one scene in particular impressed her daughter. Watch. My daughter told me um, this one of the scenes in this show where my hair goes down and all that uh, became a viral on TikTok. And my daughter sent it to me and she was like so excited. She's like, Mom. Uh, <laughs> I was like, I don't even know who did this, but thank you. <laughs> but uh, it was That's very funny. Fantastic. She was um, very excited that it went viral just seen from friends. Uh, now you are officially the coolest mom on the planet. <laughs> I, no, no, for real. I could do anything <laughs> in the world, but the fact that it was on TikTok and went viral, I was the coolest mom. <laughs> Not only is Richards a loving mom, she also stars on Bravo's Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And she shared what it's been like being on the show and how her first season compares to her second, which has Richards at the center of some of the drama. Watch. 
My first season was really like, I think, getting my feet wet. It's like your honeymoon right. phase. I had a lot of fun. This season for me was very different and um, very challenging. I still enjoyed being on the show, but it, it's hard. It is really hard. Yeah. There's a lot of personalities and a lot of judgment and different dynamics, but I also think that's also what makes it interesting for people to watch. You can watch Denise Richards dive into her other projects on Couchsurfing, now on People TV. You made it. There he is. Yeah. Hey, hey, you were right. Google Maps. Better than Waze. Oh, without question. The woman's voice, so much more pleasing. Did you give me a nickel tour? No. Oh, you got to see this place. Come on, I built a little theater. Really? Yeah. Uh, excuse me. Hello. What are you doing? I'm showing them around. Then we're going to go get some uh, supplements. A little show and supplements. Season two of the Golden Globe winning series, The Kaminsky Method, is streaming now on Netflix. And if you haven't seen it yet, this season sees one iconic actor joining the cast, Paul Reiser. When I caught up with him, he told me what it was like working with the show's two leading men, Michael Douglas and Alan Arkin. When you work with guys who are, in my mind, actual legends, you know, you want to make sure you step up your game. So you come prepared and you do your work as you always should. But I just learned so much. I mean, watching these guys, you know, guys who are terrific and make it look effortless, it's not really effortless. It's because there's a lot of effort. It takes a lot of effort to look effortless. And uh, Alan Arkin, I was, I grew up and I was specifically a fan of his because he just has this magic rhythm and this thing that's half funny, half heartbreaking, and he's just always popped the screen for me in, the, in a good way. And Michael Douglas was a different kind of actor in my mind. I like, he's just been a big star for so long. I never really thought about, you know, is he good? <laughs> he's just like, yeah. well, he, Michael Douglas. And then I worked with him, and I remember the first day, we had a see, we did a scene together, and he was so in my mind. I was like, it was so low key, and I'm thinking to myself, I don't think he's uh, doing a good job here. I don't think, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think this is gonna look so good. Come on, man! And then I watched the film, went, oh, he's like a genius. He's like, he knows exactly where to calibrate himself, and what's seen and what's not seen, and the subtlety of his work was something that I was not fully appreciating before. I thought, oh, there's a reason he's a huge star. This guy's good. It's sort of like, you know, going behind the scenes a little bit. You watch somebody on film and that's one thing. And then you see how it happens. Um, and so it was an education. It was also kind of funny, it's, uh, you know, in this show, Michael Douglas's character is a acting coach and he's an acting student. So kids are going to learn acting, but it really was like going to acting school. It was like, watching and learning from these guys was uh, was really informative. Not only did Paul learn a thing or two from the show stars, but he also developed some pretty serious chemistry with them. He told me about an improvised moment filmed during one of the scenes with Michael Douglas that made for a great laugh. I think it was the wardrobe who came up with the idea that my character would wear Birkenstocks and socks. <laughs> of course. Which was just genius. And it was... <laughs> This wasn't planned, but Michael just looked down at my shoes and came up and just looked at me like, okay. <laughs> and then, so we, we have to film that. So we got a shot of my shoes and then back up to Michael making that face. of like, well, that says it all. It's like, my daughter's dating a guy who wears Birkenstocks and socks. <laughs> and your character is older than you are now. There's some makeup, there's a new belly. I mean, what yes. was your initial reaction with this transformation? Well, the original thought when he said, well, you know, Chuck Lorre said, we're going to age you up and we're going to give you a gut and we're going to give you, we're going to make you bald. And I said, well, I can save your money because I have my own gut <laughs> and uh, the, the balding is happening. Just hang out a couple of years and you'll save some money. But he said, no, we're going to give you more of a gut. So they, they would, you know, we worked out this extra padding and these makeup guys would come. It would be like a two and a half hour, three hour process wow. in the morning. And, uh, you know, you sort of zone out and fall asleep and you wake up and I, I would look in the mirror and see my father. I went, okay, this must be working. Um, but they were really good. They were, and, and to the point that I, I I would forget I was wearing it. And so when we'd have rehearsals or I'd need a new actor, sometimes would be an actor that I know and I'd go over and say hello and they would like either not recognize me or try and bite their tongue and go, oh God, Paul has let himself go. And I, and I would forget that. I would go, no. And then sometimes I would overcompensate. I'd go, Bald, fake, fake. Actually, look, hair. And they go, relax. We go. We read the script. We know. 
Paul's performance as Martin already is a hit with fans, even earning him some Emmy buzz. He tells me how he feels about the acknowledgement. It's really flattering. Uh, um, I, you know, you, that's something I don't think we ever think of. Um, you know, it's like you don't you don't ever take a job going. Maybe this will lead to a, a trophy. Um, you know, so to me, the thrill is getting to play with those people and 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 getting to create this character and and have fun. And then when it gets seen and people are enjoying it, that's really the icing. And then if somebody says we actually enjoyed it enough that we're gonna nominate you, it's like, well, that's absurd. But thank you. <laughs> okay, it's nice. It's you know, it's it's better than the opposite which would be mm -hmm. people gathering to say, we are going to actually uh, universally uh, mock you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, that would be bad. Thank God there's no organized mockery. Everyone, be sure to watch season two of The Kaminsky Method. It's streaming on Netflix right now. The fashion industry has weathered many storms over the years. And while the COVID-19 pandemic has put small business owners and larger corporations through financial hardship, the fashion industry is also now refocusing its standards and practices as the world fights for racial equality amid the George Floyd protests. Our producer, Stefan Doino, spoke with the New York Fashion Week creator and fashion industry consultant, Fern Malice, to discuss the current climate and some of the changes the fashion industry could see as a result. The COVID-19 pandemic is affecting the fashion industry on a wide scale and will obviously affect Fashion Week. What do you think we'll see in September? Well, I think there's a lot of things that have to happen even before September, but I don't think we're going to see a Fashion Week in any semblance of what people think of Fashion Week. I don't think that um, big gatherings of people are making sense yet. I think Fashion Week is going to be rethought. There is this powerful movement right now. Americans are protesting and making their voices heard and fighting for much needed equality. How can the industry help implement change? Well, I think this industry, like every industry, is also racking their brains, figuring out what do we do? How do we do it? You know, everybody's trying to listen and learn a little bit more about what's the tragedy of racial inequality in this country. You know, it didn't happen last week. It's been happening for hundreds of years. Um, I think that I think that there needs to be more people of color in the C-suite in all of the industry. Um, you know, CEOs and presidents and chief marketing officers. There needs to be more pe black people on the boards of directors of the public companies that are out there in fashion. You know, and I think that there's a platform where the there's there are many um, very successful and very promising black designers out there now. I mean, more than I've seen in many, many years. Fur not only created Fashion Week as we know it today, she was also the executive director of the Council of Fashion Designers of America from 1991 to 2001. What has, would you say has changed since you started working in the industry and what do you hope to see continue change? Well, I, like I said, I hope to see people listening more, being more respectful, making those changes in their in every organization, in every fashion company, in retail stores, in in production firms, in PR firms, in in um, you know in the modeling world. I mean, all of it. I mean, we just have to see it. We have to talk to each other. There needs to be more dialogue and more conversation. And that dialogue is happening right now, especially on social media, after Aurora James, founder of the brand Brother Bellies, launched a powerful initiative. The 15% pledge is a new effort calling upon major national retailers to dedicate 15% of their shelf space to support Black-owned businesses. Uh, if consumers want to be more mindful about supporting Black voices, who are some designers we can start paying more attention to? Brothers Valley, Telford, Clement, Flaquan, um, Christopher John Rogers, Tracy Reese, Kevin Hall in LA, Heron Preston, Romeo Hunt. You know, there are a lot of people doing doing good work. I'm sure we're going to see things from Virgil Abloh and Kahire Moss, you know, Kirby Jean Raymond. They really stand for something. They mean something, you know, and they, they're they not going to waste an opportunity, you know, to just go out there and sell pretty clothes. They really, you feel it in their soul. There are so many talented black designers, and I think that we're going to start to see and hear, hear that, hear their voices more, and see them out there more. And I think that the industry owes that to them. And 
you know, I, I, you can't tell people to buy their clothes just because they're black designers. You have to buy things that you love and they have to be talented people to, to deserve the business that they have, but their voices and their point of view should be heard. And fashion always expresses the point of view of what's happening in the world. To learn more about the 15% Pledge, you can visit 15percentpledge.org. Coming up tomorrow, Preppy Kitchen's John Cannell is sharing his latest hack of the moment involving one of the stars of our isolation baking recipes, bananas. Plus, everything you need to know about the highly anticipated second season of The Twilight Zone. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye, guys.